eighth graders, I'm Ms. Henderson. I'm an eighth grade ELA teacher at Ferndale Middle School, but I'm so excited to be working with you today. For this lesson, you'll need paper or your ELA notebook and something to write with. So today we're going to be explaining the impact of a word's connotative meaning on the poem Can't by Edgar Albert Guest. And this is a poem we've read before. We determined the theme of it, we understand the gist of it, and we've looked at some figurative language, but today we're going to be looking at specific words within the poem. Words have a lot of power and authors use their words very carefully. They might use them to create a certain picture or help the readers visualize a certain picture in the story. They may also be used to help the readers feel a certain emotion, which we call the mood, or they may be used by the author to convey how they feel about a certain topic, which we call the tone. Words have two different meanings. They have their denotation, which is the literal dictionary definition of a word, and they also have their connotation, which is the emotion associated with the word. So let's look at an example with the word snake. The denotation of snake is a long, limbless reptile which has no eyelids, a short tail, and jaws that are capable of considerable extension. So you might see the denotative meaning of a word used like this. Be careful hiking during the day. Snakes may be out looking for water. In this context, this person is referring to a long limbless reptile with no eyelids and a short tail. The connotation behind snake is often someone or something that is dangerous, evil, or sneaky. And you might see the connotating of the word snake used in a sentence like this. I can't believe that low down dirty snake sold me this broken TV. In this context, they are not talking about a reptile. Reptiles don't sell TVs. They are talking about someone who's sneaky and sold them a broken TV. So the denotative meaning and connotative meanings are different. But words can have the same denotation, but have different connotations. So we're going to look at this word said and all these other versions of the word said. So they all have the same denotation. If I look at the word soothe, that word has a positive connotation. The word cheered has an even more positive connotation. You think of like excitement when you think of the word cheered. On the other side of that, the word complained, if someone is complaining about something, they're not too happy, they're kind of annoyed. If someone snaps, it's even more negative. So these words all have the same denotation, but they have different connotations. If I say the mother soothed the toddler, that has some caring emotion behind it. But if I say the woman snapped at the toddler, that has a lot of anger. So just because the words have the same denotation doesn't mean they have the same emotions behind them. If you were in my figurative language lesson, you remember I asked you to think of a time that you encountered a challenging situation. Remember, mine was about dealing with and overcoming the challenges that come with remote learning. If you were in that lesson, you can go ahead and think about what you wrote then. And if you weren't in that lesson, you can go ahead and write about a time that you encountered a difficult situation and what you did to overcome that. So again, we've read this poem multiple times. And we already know that when the author is talking about this word can't, he's talking about self-doubt or doubting yourself. So while I'm reading this poem, I want you to look at all the powerful words that the author uses to discuss or talk about the word doubt and just kind of think to yourself, based on these words, what does the author want me to understand or picture about this idea of doubt or the word can't? So while I'm reading, make sure you're following along. Can't by Edgar Albert Guest. Can't is the word that is foe to ambition an enemy ambush to shatter your will. Its prey is forever the man with a mission, and bows but to courage and patience and skill. Hate it with hatred that's deep and undying, for once it is welcome, t'will break any man. Whatever the goal you are seeking, keep trying, and answer this demon by saying, I can. So the author used a lot of powerful language in this poem, but there were a couple words in just that first line that really stuck out to me. This word foe and ambition. So foe has a negative connotation. And the denotation or the literal meaning of the word foe is an enemy or opponent. 
In the context that is used here, can't is the word that is foe to ambition. I think of a foe as like, I think of battling or harming or trying to harm someone. The next word that sticks out to me is ambition, and that's actually a positive word. And the denotation of ambition is a desire to achieve something. So it's a very positive word. But when I think about ambition, I think of positivity. I can almost visualize a person trying to or like really excited that they've achieved something. So now I'm going to think if the author is using this very negative word that's talking about harming ambition or battling ambition, what's the author trying to get me to understand about doubt if it is a foe of ambition? The author helps me understand that doubt is battling against your positivity or your desire to accomplish your goals. Now let's look at the impact of this word. What does it help us understand about doubt or kind of visualize? I almost picture like these two things fighting. Doubt is literally trying to take over or battle ambition. And that helps me understand and it emphasizes the harm that doubt can have on your desire to achieve a goal. It's literally constantly battling against it. Now you're gonna follow the same steps and complete the same chart I did in the same way to determine the meaning or the impact of the meaning of some of these words in this poem. We're gonna look at the fifth line of this poem. Hate it, and we know it is doubt. Hate it with hatred that's deep and undying. So I want you to take a second and pause the video, and I want you to determine deep and undying, are they negative? What is the denotation? What is the literal meaning of the word deep and undying? And what emotions do you associate with the word deep, deep hatred and undying hatred? And based on that, what does it help you understand about doubt or how you should handle it? So take a second, pause the video, and fill out the chart the same way I did earlier. All right, now let's check your answers and see if you're on the right track. So when we look at the word deep, it is a negative word. It's used in a negative connotation. The denotative meaning of deep is reaching down below the surface or reaching far inward. When I think of the emotions behind a deep hatred, I think of a consuming anger. So our next word is undying, and you may have heard it in other contexts, like undying love, and in that context is positive. But in this context, undying hatred, it's a negative thing. And the denotation of undying is something that lasts forever. So if you have an undying hatred, that is an anger and a hatred that you can't get rid of. You can't let go of it. So if you have a deep or consuming anger or towards doubt, and if you have an undying hatred where you refuse to get rid of your hatred for doubt, what does that help you understand about doubt in this poem? It helps you understand that your hatred of self-doubt should be so consuming that you never, ever let it go. So what is an impact of a statement like that? You can almost picture someone who is just like really, really angry. You may have met someone like that that's really angry and they just kind of like refuse to let things go. And it's kind of the same thing here. You, you think about someone that hates something or something that hates something so much it refuses to let it go. And why might that be something that we want to do with such a negative thing like doubt? It helps us understand that you should never forget how dangerous self-doubt can be because if you let it in, it will break you. Now I want you to try this same skill with a book of your choice. While you're reading, I want you to look for two or three really, really powerful words. I want you to ask yourself, is it used in a negative or positive way? What is the literal meaning of the word? And then what is the emotional meaning? Then you're gonna look at that connotation or emotional meaning and ask yourself, what is the author trying to get you to understand about the topic or idea? So for us, we use the connotation to help us understand what the author wanted us to know about doubt. You're gonna do the same thing with whatever the topic or idea is. 
And while you're looking at these words, I want you to ask yourself, what picture is painted by these words? Remember I talked about ambition and doubt literally battling against each other? Or what emotions do you feel? And what emotions are conveyed by the author based on the words that they use? So let's review what we did today. We determined the difference between connotative and denotative meanings of words. We determined the connotative meanings of words in the poem can't. And we analyzed their impact in the text. We learned that you should reject self-doubt, otherwise it can prevent you from achieving your goals. So after this lesson, hopefully you're a lot more comfortable looking at powerful words and trying to figure out their impact on the text. Thank you so much for learning with me today. I can't wait to see you back here for our next lesson.